I got this clearance, these clearance plants at Lowe's. They're the ranunculus. Look at how lovely this is. It wasn't blooming like this when I bought it. They mostly look like this and a couple like that. But then these came out. I've had them for about a week now. And I just love these darling white ones with the pink edges. They're so gorgeous. Look at that. And since I've had it, the red ones started blooming and opening up. So they look really good. So here's how it originally looked. This is this, the other pot that I bought. I bought two pots. And that's how they looked. And I knew that they would um, easily be fixed. So only recently did this one bloom and it's opening up. It's so pretty. It's going to be even more gorgeous when it opens up a little more. I love how many petals they have. They have so many. It's um, ranunculus. So I know they come in bulbs and come fall you can take the bulbs out or you can take the whole pot to a dry place and not let it get soaked and the um, better if you remove the bulbs from the soil so that it doesn't break down and you can replant them again the following year year after year so what I'm gonna do is deadhead everything so by just taking a few moments to deadhead and get rid of all the ugly um, dead parts which I probably need to deadhead this one as well and just kind of pulling out the dead leaves it's gonna come back to life like this one this one bounced back a lot faster and I can enjoy it the rest of the um, season and it's in a nice pot I love it and it was $18.98 full price so half price it was about uh, nine ten dollars but it's worth it because I have the bulbs that are gonna come back every year and I get the pot in my enclosure I have seedlings that were slowly popping up but because of all the rains it flushed all the nutrients out of the water so I use that nutrient rich water that's in the trough to water these plants and there are several chili peppers coming up but it's such a big difference in daytime temperatures versus nighttime temperatures daytime temperatures are around in their 60s and 70s and nighttime temperatures are in their 40s the low 40s so let's see I'm gonna try to locate those so those are some chili peppers over there and a few others but they are taking a long time to pop up because they love the heat and it's not to the temperature that it needs yet and my tomatoes are definitely growing so I'm gonna give it a few more days before I transplant them and there are a couple kinds that either need more heat or more time because finally I see one tomato plant in this one right here and a couple over there and one over there so my sunflowers are growing steadily day by day I love it so much it's going to be really pretty I want the whole garden to be lush and green here's another sunflower coming up next to a fennel that self seeded itself so there is a reason why I built this enclosure for my garden beds because something keeps digging into my soil so on the periphery the outer periphery of my garden enclosure I put a bunch of Gita seeds all around here uh, they're beans and they never came out because it's been so cold and I think this is the first one I believe it is now 
the rest of the periphery I had put sunflowers and other things and the sunflowers are the ones that are actually reliable in growing now I have no more beans growing up here but if you had seen this morning it was like a war zone something was digging here 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 just everywhere here just destroying seeds that I had put in and if there's anything growing it's probably dead that's why I always collect cages metal wire stuff like that because I want to thwart whatever it is that comes night after night and just destroys my plants here's a baby sunflower and I had one in the corner here but it got wrecked by whatever was digging and here are two more sunflowers and amongst this board is another sunflower here and what I like to do, since I don't like these to go to waste, this is borage. And I didn't know in my set of seeds I had this variegated borage. And I looked it up and there is such a thing as variegated borage. And what I'm going to do is just pluck them, pluck the blossoms and eat them. They taste like melons. And right here in the center are the seeds. See the blackness right here? Those are the seeds. And if you don't pluck them to eat them or freeze them or decorate cakes with them, they're going to self-seed and you'll have a bunch more borage everywhere. So why not just eat them now? while it's blooming and the most nutritious I'll just sit here and eat them all in one go mm. yum there they all go and a whole bunch more blooms are on their way. I love spring. All the plants are coming back to life. So here is a rose bush and it's chock full of new growth. All this red, all the red leaves are new growth. So let me show you its beautiful bloom. I love it. It's so gorgeous. I love that color. It's so rich. So there's a reason why I say to eat your borage as soon as you can because I have so many more blossoms and look at how many plants I have. This is borage row. It's supposed to be borage and sunflower row but the sunflowers are kind of, they're, sh they're being shaded out by these borage plants which really had a boost in growth during the rains. You can eat directly from your garden if you grow organically. And right now, because it's so cold, there aren't that many pests. What happens when you don't eat the flowers? They start to shrivel up and drop, and that's how they see themselves because each center has about three or four seeds. And you can give those to friends so they can grow their own. They do not like to be transplanted, they have a deep root stock, so like root system. So if you dig it up, you have to put it in a tall vessel that can take all that root but even then they don't like that 
they grow very easily so it's really easy to just pick one of these and the seeds hand it to a friend and let them grow it themselves like I said something's been digging around everywhere and it's really frustrating if I could enclose my whole yard I would because it whatever it whether it be a possum or a raccoon it's just destroying my garden wherever I don't have something growing so here's another sunflower in this pot which I was trying to grow something else but I don't know if I put the seeds in there or not here's calendula coming back which I love I think that's a weed or it could be a Gerbera daisy I'm not sure I have to kind of refine my identification of plants when I have extra seeds, I sprinkle them everywhere to have a polyculture. So here I have a lettuce, <laughs> and I think I had sprinkled some flower seeds in here, but they didn't pop up. Here's another lettuce, and here's a weed, which I need to pull out for the chickens. And, oh yes, I keep forgetting, I need to harvest all these snap peas for my daughter. Under that netting over there, I'm supposed to be growing some green beans, the bush variety, and it's not coming up yet. But that's the only way, that's one of the ways I use to protect plants that I grow is to cover it. And this here is so bushy. This is all my tatsoi and pak choy, and some Swiss chards and ruby chards. Fennel. I mean, look at the assortment of foliage. Just assortment of different types of plants. And my apples are growing. This is a four-in-one tree. So some flowers are white. Some are pink. This is this one is really gorgeous. So pretty. Here's my donut peach. I am so excited. So it's been several weeks since um, I posted my other um, video of my donut peach tree. And the blossoms are now replaced with lots of foliage. And you'll see the little fruit forming. It's a fuzz ball. They're just fuzzy little balls. And this is great because I bought this last year and transplanted it into the ground straight away. Here is more damage and digging from my garden intruder. Here is my pineapple guava starting to make little flowers. All the plants are starting to wake up and starting to make lots of green foliage or blooms. Look at this beautiful Caracara orange tree. It is so fragrant. It's like a perfume when I pass by it. It smells so good. Mmm. And it's just chock full of blooms. Unfortunately, it's dropped a lot of blooms. My armeria is coming back. All my perennials are trying to come back against all this cold and rain. I have nasturtium blooms hiding out amongst their round foliage. And they taste like every part of the nasturtium is edible. The seed, the flower, and the leaves taste like black pepper, like a peppery flavor. So upon inspection of the plant, I don't see any types of pests on it so far, and I'm just going to eat it. So my new garden bed, 
with the alliums, whether it be bunching onions, leeks, and chives. Some little green grass-like things are coming up and I know some of the seeds were really old and so they may not come up but the Carrington leeks I bought last year from Baker Creek are all coming up. I love that. And pa patriotic flag leek. Globe bunching onion. Yeah, so I'm excited. I recently had a, I had two pots of jasmine with the fragrant flowers that I got, I propagated from my mom's garden. And they were tiny little cuttings, about four inches long. And now I've grown them and for about two years. And now it's about two feet tall. And I transplanted them out of a black pot. So it's looking a little sad here. And this might go to my brother so he can have some lovely scented flowers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pl place one pot by my back door and one by my front door so I can enjoy the scent of the jasmine. As well as my sister gave me two pots of gardenias which I plan to transplant into my pretty pots. Another thing I'm excited about is this plant. It's supposed to be a dry, drought-tolerant desert plant, and it survived the winter and all this rain. I was so shocked. So it's it has the, um, let me see what it's called. It's called Strawflower Ruby Clusters. I really love the pink little blossoms against the gray silvery and very soft leaves. It's so enjoyable. So here are the two gardenias, this one and this other pot here that my sister gave me. And every time it tried to bloom, it would be too cold and it would kill the blossom. So here it's forming another blossom and more blooms. So I'm gonna get this into some bigger pots. Right now it's in uh, one of those six inch pots, I guess. And I need to transfer them into a bigger, more decorative pot. It's been unseasonably wet and cold this year, this winter, and for a prolonged period with, you know, the sleet, the rain, over 12 inches of rain and, um, wind oh my gosh a couple days ago it was just just crazy winds thrashing my tree around and I was just thinking oh my gosh all my blooms are gonna fall off of this plant and somehow miraculously it survived but the tree looks very very sad <laughs> like it's so bare on the other hand my lavender is gorgeous and the bees go about it all day in the, in the daytime. And I don't know if those are the seeds. But they smell really good. I love it. And I love the taste of lavender. It has a very specific taste. And we get from boba time, I get the drink. It's called Lavender Blue and it tastes so good. So I transplanted my other lavenders to these two pots here. So this this pot I bought for only $7.99 at Lowe's. I went back there for a quick trip to get something and I spotted these and that price is wonderful for such a big pot. And I love the color. It's um, plant stand. And Here's another plant, it's much smaller. And this one, actually that other plant that I, that I had in the yellow pot, it came from this one. This one actually had three plants in one and I pulled that one out so that it would give it room and I mean, it's already divided out. It had its own root system. So I could have divided this out more, but I liked it being bushy. So 
these are gonna be really fragrant later on so so I bought two of these blue pots similar to those green pots and I'm gonna put the two gardenias in the blue pots and one will be in the front also gardenias are heavily scented really wonderful so I'll put one in the front by the front door and the one in the back by the back door oh so while I was recently at Home Depot I found I came across a few more bare root fruit trees which I was looking for absolutely and it's kind of late in the year so I was surprised they still had them because last time I went it was really sparse and I was like oh you know let me see what this Chojuro Asian pear tastes like and it says it tastes like butterscotch so my husband was like okay let's get it and so we took it out of its bag that was filled with pine shavings to keep it moist. So this is what it looks like. I've been soaking it for a couple of nights. It's, I think it's only supposed to soak one, one day. But um, I need to find a, an appropriate spot for it. I'm, wa I'm wanting it to be near my other Asian pear tree, but I'm not too sure. And so I'm, I gotta figure that out today for sure and plant it while, because the days are getting warmer and it needs, it needs a chance to grow roots. So I need to water it in and the cooler weather is more protective because if you plant it when it's hot, it's just gonna burn it up before it has a chance to take root. So from that fruit tree, with a bag of shavings, I decided to mulch my strawberry plants. So that's where these came from. I didn't have enough to cover every single pocket, but I covered whatever I could so that it will not get dry too easily. And I'm just loving that they came up so quickly. Here are my other nasturtiums. I just love the beautiful colors of the flowers. They range from orange to red to yellow to pinks. Um, so this is this whole area is being taken over, as you can see, by the nasturtium. And this uh, Nunum African basil overwintered. I couldn't believe it. I figured if it's from Africa, it's going to die immediately in the win this cold, cold winter. And it had lost its leaves in the fall. I'm so surprised it's still alive. So my mom always har harvests her Okinawan spinach. And you know, I, I planted some over here and it just grew and grew and grew. And I just hadn't had a chance to harvest it because I was harvesting my um, tatsoi and bok choy. And now it's going to, it's going to seed. My society garlic was only a fifth or a sixth of what what it is now when I bought it. And look at how lush this is. And I love the texture. I just love to run my hands through it. And you can use the leaves to season kind of like an onion. It's a very strong scent. It's not for everyone, but it probably has a lot of good qualities as far as nutrients goes. And because the scent is so strong, I believe it um, keeps pests away. Here's my variegated society garlic. And it is a little bit bigger than when I bought it. And I bought it at the same time as that green society garlic. But for some reason, it's a very slow grower. I don't know if it's the location or because it's a variegated variety. Here is another society garlic and it's doing fantastic and it's kind of next to this Mexican lime tree and it's next to this unknown and I believe it is a kumquat that I grew years ago from seed however I have not seen a single blossom or a single fruit from this thing so I don't know if it's confirmed to be kumquat yet
so a couple years ago I bought this Subel Sapote and I'm seeing these blooms and I don't know if they're going to be flowers or fruit. Is that it? That little green thing right there? Um, I'm hoping it is because I'm, I'm so wanting to taste one of these. Um, and I bought a pair of these thinking that they needed each other to cross pollinate. But when I looked it up, it didn't need to be pollinated. So um, I gave one to my mom. My figs are coming back, thank goodness. They were looking really sad. It's been a really cold, wet winter. And I've been so busy trying to catch rainwater and trying to keep everything alive or warm. And here I found an apricot. The problem that I have is that I have a lot of squirrels and possums and raccoons and birds and stuff. So they just, you know, eat all the fruits before I get to them, which is pretty frustrating. So earlier in the season, oh, here's another apricot right in the center there. So they're green right now, so they're camouflaging, camouflaging. So it's going to be hard for anything to spot them. But when they turn yellow, they're this beautiful, um, beautiful shade of orange. And I just love the way this tastes. This is the Tilton apricot. Crazy that this whole time I've been complaining about how cold and wet it has been and and freezing and I didn't want to come out but at the same time it's now the temperatures are finally warming up and yesterday was 68 degrees in the day and today is going to be 70 and in a couple days it's 73 and I'm already warm outside and it's not even noon yet and it's like early morning like 9 so I am just burning up and I transplanted some plants and I think I'm going to go inside and get some refreshments and, and cool down and come back for another round of planting. I dug the hole for the bare root fruit stalk, uh, the Asian pear tree, and I was noticing how sad the root system is. I mean, <laughs> it barely has any roots. So anyway, I dug the hole and then I think it's still a little too deep. So I'm going to just stick a little more soil back in. Okay. I've not known Asian pears to be that sweet, but if it tastes like butterscotch and my husband's kind of a sweet tooth, if that's what he wants, then I don't mind if he invests in it. So that's about right. It's about ground level with the ground. And you don't ever want to bury the rootstock right here at the grafting point because then the actual rootstock plant will grow from there and it'll give you a plant that you don't want. So I'm gonna bury it back with the soil, backfill it, and then I'll put some nice soil um, to boot or some fertilizer. But this soil is very soft and very moist from all the rains we've had, and the last rain was just a week ago. So I planted it, and I am making kind of a well and then I'm going to water it in so that it to ensure that it gets enough water and I checked that it was still alive which it is because it has little buds that's the reason why I bought it because it's late in the season to be buying bare root fruit trees but it was only $13 and if it grows like my other Asian pear or my apricot or my pear, Bartlett pear, or my apple tree, then they have they already have a great chance at life because someone grew it for us. 
and even if the root system is is sad it's got life in it and it's dormant currently so i um firmed in the soil so that it doesn't have any air pockets and i'm gonna water it in and hope that it has a good chance of living friends here's another way to compost in place sort of so we just mowed the lawn and just dumped the grass into the chicken run and this is the same location where we had dumped leaves in the late winter season and already we have pill bugs and all kinds of things trying to break it down as well as the chickens trampling all over it kicking it around and they usually like fresh grass to eat so they'll kind of eat those and eat the bugs that are in here and they'll break it down and and they get nice cool fresh grass to step on as opposed to that dry stuff and way back there uh, they haven't kicked it over to that area yet or spread it out so um, but that leaf is now starting to break down as well because they dust bathed way back there so over time this is going to break down and sometime in June or July I'm going to uh, shovel all this stuff up and place it elsewhere to further break down into good compost and it'll be hot compost and then the chickens will have access to fresh dirt below and bugs and cool soil that they can dust bathe in so that this stuff isn't composting in their run. In the winter time it's nice because then they get the heat from it but in the summertime they'll be cooler they'll be a little bit more underground as that this layer is going to be removed. <laughs> 